How's it going everyone and welcome to the second part of the tutorial on how to create this abstract displacement looping animation. My name is Nick and today we're going to be texturing and preparing this project to render. If you guys haven't already watched the first part of the video, I highly encourage you guys to check it out so that way we could all be on the same page. So in the last episode, I covered how to put together the scene as well as going over uh, how to put together the settings, uh, the appropriate settings for the file, uh, the lighting and preparing the animation. So if you're here to learn on how to texture in Octane, then it's totally fine. As long as you guys are getting something out of these videos and getting everyone more familiar with Cinema 4D and Octane as well. So without further ado, let's get the show on the road. So basically, this is where we left off in the previous episode. Uh, and before we do anything, I just want to change one quick thing. And this is in the timeline dope sheet. So I'm going to go to window timeline dope sheet, open this up, and I'm just going to move this to 60. And I also wanted to highlight something that I forgot to mention. So if you open up noise and then global scale, you can see the line going upwards, meaning it's increasing the animation or the size of the animation. And then the line going downwards is lowering it. So that way it's a consistent looping animation where it just increases and decreases and then it goes backwards. So there's like a, a pattern. So I just wanted to show you guys that before I do anything. All right, so <clears throat> I think you guys are already ready to texture this thing because texturing is just so much fun. And I think this is one of the many reasons why I love 3D. It's the fact that I love lighting scenes as well as texturing. So this is gonna be really fun for me to like explain. So now let's just begin by going to materials and choosing an octane glassy, uh, glossy material, not glassy. Uh, if it was glassy, it would be a specular material. So I'm going to open this. All right. And then I'm going to go to node editor. And right off the bat, you can see uh, we have a lot of space here. So that's perfect. So that, that way you guys can see what's going on. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a octane gradient. So let's bring an octane gradient. So this is how we're going to color our surface over here now i'm just going to apply this to the subdivision surfaces over here change that to surface two okay and right off the bat we're getting like a really glossy texture at the moment but we're gonna fix that so uh i'm gonna also bring an image texture real quick just to give it a little bit of texture uh, and roughness so plop that into the roughness channel and then just open this up texture let's go to imperfections and let's choose dirt and choose no and then what i'm also going to do is i'm going to make a copy by holding control and dragging this and then connecting this with that and also connecting the gradient to the roughness and then what i'm going to do is to lower the effects excuse me sorry uh, so that way you guys can see so it's a little bit glossy, but I still want that shininess So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go solo node on this so that way we can see what's going on If not, let's also go to this one so that way we can see it better, but for some reason it's not Coming okay. There it is. So let's just lower this by maybe 25% and then let's kind of see how that looks so let's unsolo this and if it's not coming up, just go to this little bar over here and just put it back to path tracing. And now that's already looking a lot better. So, so now let's just pretty much open this up again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the gradient node. And this is where uh, things are going to get really interesting. So we're going to press this little arrow over here and we're going to go to load preset. Now, Cinema 4D already has preloaded... Uh, gradients in the system uh, but you could also use your own color schemes as well that you can drag in here as well uh, but I'm going to choose scheme 7 because that's the one that I use for the tutorial so already we're already getting some really unique colors here so what I'm going to do next is activate linear and already we're getting two different nodes here so we're getting sine wave and transform now you can play around with 
the um, the effects here or the types and get different results. So if I switch this to sine, sine wave, this is what you'll get. If I change it to triangle, this is something that you'll get as well. But let's stick to sine wave for now. I think I'm already liking that. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to bring a mixed material because I want to mix two materials at the same time. So if I just grab, if I just search mix and then drag it here, it's not going to go to the appropriate channel. So what we're going to do is put it on texture number two. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring a image texture again, bring this in here, connect it with that. And then I'm going to go back to uh, my folders here and I'm going to choose an acrylic pack that I downloaded. I forgot who it was. I'll probably mention it in the description and you guys can probably download this for free. So check that out. The image that I used was this one. So now you can see we're already getting like really interesting patterns just from this image texture alone, especially because we're mixing the two. But we could also mess around with the results if we bring in a float texture. So let's say if you want more of this texture, you could do that with just a float texture, right? So automatically it's at 0.50 because it's sort of in the middle. Right? So you're getting the best of both worlds. But like I said, if you want more of, let's say, uh, of texture one, you would go all the way to zero. So this is from the acrylic. Now, if you go all the way to the top, now you're getting more of that gradient. So we're going to just stick to maybe 0 0.9. Oh, well, I messed up there. So 0 0.9. I got the microphone in the way and sometimes I misclick. So you'll get something like this. And before we do anything, I'm also going to uh, connect the transform with this and also bring a projection and connect it with the sine wave. So that way everything is intertwined with one another. So like if I change something from the texture projection, it's also going to change these two automatically. So for example, let's say if I change the mesh UV to a spherical, this is the result that you'll get, right? So something that I want to also do is just play around with the settings just to get different results. And like I said, guys, I encourage you to play around with these settings and, you know, get this different results. Uh, this is what we do when it comes to like creativity. Uh, my octane is sort of glitching out because I'm like uh, minimizing the screen. So forgive me if you see anything weird. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to increase maybe, maybe the Y. I'm already liking this already. Like, I, I don't think I'm going to mess with it that much. And... Let's also go to, let's try something different. So let's try negative 10. So see right off the bat, like we're already getting like these really different results here. And I'm really liking this effect where it's going from the purple to the pink and then from this color to the green, like it's already looking so good just from doing that. So I'm just, just going to make this even for now. And then I'm also going to maybe play around with the sizes over here. If you want more pink, you can also do that. Uh, but if you want that blue, right? So by increasing the Z axis, we can get like a, like a blue over here. So let's maybe keep that over here. And then let's also play around with this option as well, just so we could get more of that. Maybe not too much. Maybe 1.4 is okay. And yeah, I'm already liking this so far. I think this is looking pretty good. Um, you could also mess with the texture size as well. 
uh i like to keep this separate just so i can have more control and these over here i'll just keep them from the top but basically this is what i did to make uh the project that i'm including you guys in this um in this tutorial so play around with the roughness maybe make it bigger let's also solo this just so we can get a bigger a bigger uh, idea over here so it looks something like this so if i turn this off well disable the solo node now i i think i'm i'm liking this a lot like i'm very content with this and uh so now that we're done texturing this thing uh just a side note guys uh let's say if you want to play around with the colors even more like let's say you can have one texture in one subdivision surface and then you can have a different texture on the other one so let's say if i make a copy right and then let's say i've opened this one go to node editor and get active material so now we're editing that particular material and what you could do is if let's say you want to change the gradient right to a different color say we want to change it to rainbow i don't know just just to you know play around and i'm going to change it and let's see what we get so now you're getting this really interesting result right here just from doing that and you could also like make it metallic too so like let's say if you want to change the glossy to metallic you could also do this as well so i just want to show you guys uh the possibilities of what you guys can do uh just by playing around with these settings and getting different results uh so obviously for the sake of the tutorial i'm only going to keep it with one texture because i think simplicity is best for this reason uh but play around and see what you guys can come up so let's uh finish up this tutorial by going to the octane camera and uh let's enable camera imager as well as post-processing and for me i like a little bit a lot more bloom so maybe like 29 30 and uh, 30 is, sounds good to me uh and you know me my favorite lut uh out of everything here is this one over here i just love how it just pops just like that and you can also do neutral response but let's say if you guys want to like explore more different variations and let's say you want to increase the gamma or the exposure right you guys can also do that as well but for me what works uh for my taste i really like this one and already that's pretty much the end of the tutorial so now we're just gonna uh, mess around with some octane settings too if you want to increase the max samples you can also do that the less samples the easier it, or the faster it will render so for this one i'm just gonna increase it to 1200 and uh there's no file specific okay so before i do that let's just save it uh appropriately so i'm going to change this to open exr and I'm going to set this to 16-bit. And I'm going to save this. This is just a test drive that I was doing. Uh, but you can pretty much put it in any folder. So I'm just going to call this tutorial. And then you can just name it tutorial as well. Well, I don't want you to name it tutorial. But for this video, this is the tutorial. So now if I press this and uh, render it, you can already see that this is looking pretty damn good so all right guys so i hope you guys learned a lot from this uh video or this video series uh thank you guys for watching uh leave a like comment subscribe and if you have any suggestions feel free to let me know um i hope you guys have a good one take care